Don't you think I know it's risky? But there's no other way. We've got to go through this wormhole and go back in time and solve this situation. Welcome to one of the quirkier um, introductions. So this problem that I'm going to introduce you to is a fantastic way to introduce your students to division. How does it work? Well, first of all, you describe that there's a wormhole in space and you can come up with your own crazy scenario if you want. This is going to be the diagram that the kids work with. Uh, it's got 11 points on the outside, you can count them. And the first thing that you have to do, or you have to get your kids to do, is you have to triangulate a polygon with 11 sides. So what does that mean? That means that you have to draw lines so that all of the lines are non-intersecting and so that you're left with only triangles at the end of the process. So here we've been successful and now we just choose any one of the points and um, the one at the bottom there that's a five. Why is it a five? It's a five because we can that point can see five triangles. One, two, three, four, five. Get it? So let's choose another point over here. This one gets two. So why does it get two? Because it can see two triangles. We can do that for all of the points, and that's what we get. And that's kind of our secret code word for success in this wormhole. Now it's time to face the wormhole. First, we add zeros in the center, then a loop of ones, and then a loop that's our code word. Now we just have to loop outwards until we solve the wormhole. But how do we add an extra loop? Well, here's a loop that we need to add numbers to. First thing we do is that we choose a box with three numbers that we already know, and we're trying to find out the last number. We multiply together the two numbers that share an edge with the number that we're trying to find. So 11 times 5 is 55. Then we subtract 1 and we divide by the number that just shares a single point. That would be 6. So 55 minus 1, you always have to subtract 1, divided by 6. That's 9. Let's do it for another box. This, uh, this time we're going to choose this box with the 3 and 11. So that would be 33. Minus 1 would be 32. And then you have to divide by the number just sharing a point. So divide by 2. 32 divided by 2 is 16. We can continue that all the way around the loop until it's completed. And then we can start on our next loop. And we keep on going until we solve the entire wormhole. Something interesting happens. First of all, you always end up with zeros on the outside. I like to tell students, uh, whenever they discover that, that they've gone into the past, but they've been sucked back to the present. One of the beautiful things about working with this problem is that uh, if the students make an, an error, then they're going to end up with fractions. But if they don't make an error, they are guaranteed that all of the numbers will be whole numbers. Remember that this will only work if you have a correct code word. So the initial process that we went through to find that code word is important. You can also check the students work by just looking at any box and ensuring that, for example, 5 times 10 minus 1 is equal to 7 times 7. So that has to be true for every box that you choose in your wormhole. This is the worksheet that your students will get. It's got a loop of zeros in the middle, followed by a loop of ones, and then they have to add that loop that's the, their code word. And that code word again is created by triangulating an 11 sided polygon. Before you leave the wormhole, ask your students what it looks like from the other side. So the other side would mean that 
the small circle of zeros becomes the big circle of zeros, and the big circle of zeros becomes the small circle of zeros. So it's kind of wrapped inside out. What does it look like? It actually looks exactly the same. So there's beautiful symmetry in your wormhole. If your students have had experience with negative numbers, you can ask them, do you have to end with a loop of zeros? The answer is no. You could add an additional loop of negative ones around the zeros. And then you can keep on looping outwards, uh, repeating the wormhole, but a negative image of it. The idea for the wormhole comes from two great people. Donald Coxeter, the Canadian mathematician who was responsible for the resurgent interest in geometry in the last century, and John Horton Conway, the colorful American character who I had the joy to meet in 2010.